crew where it even caused an oil spill. However, within Tonga, the damage is far more severe. On several outlying islands, every single structure was swept away. Although it was widely reported that the tsunami only had a maximum height of 2 meters or 6 feet, this is an understatement. When a tsunami wave hits a shoreline, the topography of the ground adjacent to it can make a far higher wave, sometimes causing a wave to increase in height by as much as tenfold. One such example of this occurred on the western end of the island of Tongatapu, where tsunami waves are measured at 15 meters or 49 feet tall. The generation of this tsunami was associated with one of the largest volcanic explosions ever recorded. NASA scientists estimated that this explosion was just as powerful as the simultaneous detonation of 10 million tons of TNT. Why was it so powerful? I could best describe this powerful explosion on January 15th as one of the world's largest steam explosions. Let me explain. The Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai volcano is approximately 20 kilometers or 12 miles wide, and the vast majority of its edifice is far below sea level. At some point in the distant past, a caldera collapse occurred, causing the center of the volcano to collapse downwards like a sinkhole, while also forming a ring-shaped fracture. Ever since this last caldera forming eruption, numerous intrusions of magma have occurred around this fracture, using it as a path of least resistance in constructing the separate Hunga Tonga and Hunga Haapai Islands. In 2014-2015, another brand new vent formed, which connected the two distant islands. This latest vent soon became a dominant path for magma to travel up to the surface via what is termed a lava conduit. When Hunga Tonga erupted again on December 20th of 2021, more landmass was added to the island, causing its coastline to advance towards and then beyond the cliff of the northern caldera rim. This highly unstable section of land eventually collapsed, leading to a massive landslide which carved the island in two. Any shallow magma present caused overlying water to flash the steam and explode, generating a 20 kilometer high eruption column. With the solid rock overlying the conduit gone, an even larger volume of seawater traveled into the conduit and rushed downwards to where magma was present. Over the span of the next 24 hours, the large volume of water present in the conduit was heated until it all flashed to steam. Eventually, the steam present within the conduit was too highly pressurized and was released upwards in a powerful explosion. This explosion ejected primarily water vapor, hence the plume's mostly white color, alongside any magma present in the large conduit. Due to the nature of this explosion, this powerful eruption was over in less than 60 minutes. This is unusually brief, as similar Plinian eruptions lasted far longer. Thus, while the eruption may have ejected volcanic rock and ash at a higher rate than other highly explosive eruptions, it did so for a much shorter time span. The ash ejected from this eruption drifted largely towards the west, but also fell across large swaths of the nation of Tonga. On the island of Tongatapu, for example, approximately a centimeter of ash fell. This ash now poses a risk far more severe than the initial eruption. A majority of residents on the island source their drinking water via rain collected from rooftops. With ash present on the ground, any drinking water is now contaminated. Not only is the water now acidic due to the acid rain which fell post-eruption, but it contains dangerously high levels of several compounds such as fluorine. In moderate amounts, fluorine strengthens your bones, but at dangerously high levels, it causes bones to break. This is merely one of a host of health problems which would afflict any person, pet, or livestock who decides to drink the water. Thus, for the meantime, the